Brothers and sisters, today I want to speak to you about a man. He's not a simple man. He is, in fact, many things. Artist, writer, teacher, husband. But most importantly, most importantly, my friends, he is a believer. In my travels, there are two men who I speak of the most. One is my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But the second, he is an artist named Jeffrey Valance. Now, oftentimes, when I go to these places and I'm talking to people, they ask me, why? Why, oh, Reverend, do you find Jeffrey to be such an inspiration? And my answer is always the same. Because he sees the world through the eyes of a child. Now, it's easy, my lambs, to look around at the world in which we live and to feel our hearts getting cold and brittle. I understand, because I too feel that way. There's not a night that goes by that I don't feel the demons of doubt and fear are creeping into my room, even when my wife and children are asleep and trying to drag me down, drag me down. But my friends, in those darkest hours, all I have to do, all I have to do is stop and think. And then Blinky the Hen comes into my mind. And those crazy clowns from the Turin Shroud. And it's like that stone, that great stone has been rolled away from my heart uh, to reveal the truth. And the truth, my friends, is that magic does exist. Magic exists. And it exists in the minds and in the fingers and in the voices of God's most impertinent but most beloved of children, the artists. Now when I heard that the artist Jeffrey Valance was starting to make a body of work based on reliquaries, I'll be honest, I got a little nervous. Now, I'm not a Catholic. I'm just a poor old Protestant redneck from North Alabama. But I have to admit that the idea, the idea of an artist making themselves into a saint, a saint made me nervous. Made me a little bit nervous. And I could feel the heat starting to rise. And I could smell the brimstone in the air. And I feared for Jeffrey Valance's soul. But that fear was ridiculous. Because all I had to do was see the work to see the truth. Because my friends, when the artist Jeffrey Valance entered in his studio and moved his hands across that wood and touched that glass and touched that gold leaf, it was like the grace of God itself moved through him. And what came forth were works of such perfect beauty, the words escaped me. But I will tell you this, that at the root of each of those magnificent pieces is a story. For example, my friends, when Jeffrey was researching the Shroud of Turin, he heard, he heard, he heard that the king of rock and roll, Elvis Presley, had died sitting on the toilet reading about the book, reading a book on the Shroud of Turin. And so what did he do? He got on a plane and he flew through the air and he landed in that great city of Memphis, Tennessee and he got himself a cab and he got himself in line and he bought a ticket. And he went into the place called Graceland. And he got down on his knees and he reached his hand into the green shag carpet of the hillbilly cat's jungle room. And he pulled forth a small green fiber that years later would become the Elvis carpet reliquary. Look upon it now. Notice its intricate scroll work and heart-shaped form all lovingly rendered by Jeffrey's deft touch. The aged patina of its surface speaks of a love that is timeless and yet there also lingers the sadness that is so palatable when one walks through the hollowed halls of Elvis's beloved home. And this is just one. 
This is just one, friends, of scores of handmade, painstakingly ornate boxes. In box, what a horrible word to use to describe objects of such touching beauty, my friends. Each houses a plethora of knickknacks and collectibles and, and just plain disturbing things that Jeffrey Valance has amassed over his journeys around the globe. The sheer volume of trinkets and souvenirs are in themselves mind-boggling. But in the end, my friends, all this stuff is meaningless. Because the reason Jeffrey's reliquaries are such powerful artworks, it has nothing to do with what is housed in their intricate interiors. No, my friends, they are powerful. Because Jeffrey knows, as we all should know, that you just can't shape. You can't shape your soul with all the crap that you stuff in your boxes. No. Your soul's not shaped by the numbers in your bank account. No. Your soul is shaped on that journey that we take the journey of our lives. The work of Jeffrey Valance tells us uh, that to truly know the wondrous marvels of this universe, uh, that we simply have to be open. Uh, we simply have to be free. We have to be faithful. In the book of Mark, Jesus Christ says uh, that the kingdom of God belongs to those who possess the faith uh, of little children. Now listen to me again. Uh, the kingdom of God belongs to those who possess uh, the faith uh, of little children. Today, my friends, I celebrate Jeffrey Valance. I celebrate that he is a grown-up who still believes in Bigfoot, in aliens, in Santa Claus. I celebrate all that he was, and all that he is, and all that he shall be. I celebrate, my friends, and I ask that you join me and take his life and use it as a template for our own. Do not speed recklessly, my friends, as you go off on those interstates tomorrow. Don't speed recklessly, my friends, but occasionally stop to look to your left and your right. Pull off the side of the road. Take the less beaten path. Go in a souvenir shop and buy some refrigerator magnets or buttons. Because it's those moments, those precious moments, that are the beautiful times of our lives where we slow down and we sip of life's wine and we let it all wash through us and we know the grace of God. Magic exists. Jeffrey Valance told me so and I believe him. May the Lord bless you and keep you May the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you all and give you peace. Amen. broadcast was recorded at the Highway Chapel in beautiful Sheffield, Alabama.